Manu, so here is lesson 12 for an inspector call. So we're going to recall dubious. Now, if you feel very dubious about something, you're quite unsure or you're distrustful. So why do you think Priestley makes us feel dubious about what Gerald was up to last summer? Remember, Sheila reveals at the start of the play that all last summer, Gerald ignored her and never went near her. So why does Priestley want us to have that information? And our new word is contentious. So if you're contention, contentious, you're causing or you're likely to try and cause an argument with someone. So how is the way the inspector talks to Mr. Burling contentious? How could it cause an argument between the two of them? So you can pause the video and answer those two questions. So Priestley makes us feel dubious about what Gerald was up to last summer because it is foreshadowing of the fact that he spent last summer with Eva Smith, or as we found out um, last lesson, she changes her name to Daisy Renton. And he actually spent that summer having an affair. So when you read the play for a second time, you then realise that that is direct foreshadowing to that affair. Now, the way the inspector talks to Mr. Burling is contentious because remember that Inspector Gore has a lower status than Mr. Burling and he should speak to him very respectfully as if he's sort of afraid or in awe of Mr. Burling's status. And he doesn't. He just talks to Mr. Burling like he would any regular person. And Mr. Burling doesn't like that because he's used to being respected. So today we're going to do two things. We're going to explain how Sheila and Gerald's relationship has changed since the beginning of the play. And we're going to analyse how Mrs. Burling is presented. Now, we haven't seen an awful lot from Mrs. Burling yet, but she re-enters um, in a moment. OK, so we're going to see how their relationships changed, how Mrs. Burling presented and why Priestley chooses to present Mrs. Burling in that way. So we're going to read the next section of the play and then complete a couple of tasks linked to that but first of all we're going to just read the next section mr croft what did i tell you inspector i think miss burling ought to be excused any more of this questioning she's had an exciting day we were celebrating our engagement you know so again yet another man talking down to sheila this time gerald her future husband oh she's getting a little bit overexcited now i think she'd better go to bed so more misogyny. Now she's obviously had about as much as she can stand. He means I'm getting hysterical. Well, I have no more questions to ask. But you me. haven't finished asking questions, have you? No. Then I'm staying. But why? It's bound to be unpleasant and disturbing. And you think young women ought to be protected against unpleasant and disturbing things? If possible, yes. Well, we know one young woman who wasn't, don't we? I suppose I asked for that. Be careful you don't ask for any more, Gerald. I only meant to say why stay when you'll hate it. It can't be any worse for me than it has been. And it might be better. <laughs> I see. What? You've been put through it, and now you want to see somebody else put through it. So that's what you think I'm like. I'm glad I realised it in time. No, no I, I didn't mean... Yes, you did. And if you'd really loved me, you couldn't have said that. You listened to that story about me. I got that girl sacked from Millwood's, and now you've made up your mind I must obviously be a selfish, vindictive creature. I never said that, nor even suggested it. Then why say I want to see somebody else put through it? That's not what I meant at all. So again, think about how different the way they are talking to each other is now to the start of the play. You know, it was all very, oh, look at us, aren't we happy? Everything's great. And now suddenly we see that their you know, relationship come apart. They probably don't know each other very well. They probably do just want to show the best of themselves all the time. And that's not any way to have, you know, a normal relationship to always try to put up front so you don't show any bad sides of yourself. And of course, the bad sides of each other is what's coming out now. All right, then. I'm sorry. Yes, but you don't believe me. And this is just the wrong time not to believe me. I can tell you why Miss Burling wants to stay. A girl died tonight. A pretty lively sort of girl who never did any harm. But she died in misery and agony, hating life. I know, and I can't stop thinking about it. Miss Burling has been made to understand what she did to this girl. She feels responsible. If she leaves now and doesn't hear any more, then she'll feel she's entirely to blame. She'll be alone with her responsibility. The rest of tonight, all tomorrow, all the next night. Yes, that's it. And I know I'm to blame, and I'm 
desperately sorry. But I can't believe, I won't believe it's simply my fault that in the end she... She committed suicide. That would be too horrible. You see, we have to share something. If there's nothing else, we have to share our guilt. So again, it's this theme of responsibility. They all need to equally take the blame for what they did. This collective responsibility, which is another socialist idea. Good evening, Inspector. Good evening, Madam. I'm Mrs. Burling. My husband has just explained why you're here, and while we'll be glad to tell you anything you want to know, I don't think we can help you much. No, Mother. Whatever. So we see Mrs. Burling come in, and she, the stage directions say she's quite, um, the tone or the mood of her appearance is very different to the mood on stage. Remember, she has not met the inspector yet, and she has not realised he is not a man that you can intimidate and mess around. So we see Mrs. Burling very much treat the inspector in the same way as Mr. Burling, if not worse. And remember, we know Mrs. Burling is a cold, emotionally cold woman, and she, we know that she's Mr. Burling's social superior. So she is even more of a snob. What was the matter, Sheila? You're beginning all wrong, and I'm afraid you'll say something or do something that you'll be sorry for afterwards. I don't know what you're talking about. We all started like that. So confident, so pleased with ourselves until he began asking us questions. You seem to have made a great impression on this child, Inspector. We often do on the young ones. They're more impressionable. Go to bed, dear. You'll feel better in the morning. Nothing could be worse for me, Mother. I'm staying here until I know why that girl killed herself. Nothing but morbid curiosity. It isn't. Please don't contradict me like that. So again, we can see the way Mrs. Burling talking down to Sheila. The way, you know, don't contradict me like that. How dare you have a different opinion to mine? And we see that Mrs. Burling is very much not used to anybody challenging um, her authority or her opinions. In any case, I don't suppose for a moment that we can understand why the girl committed suicide. Girls of that class... Mother, don't! So again, this is a really important line for Mrs. Burling. I don't suppose we can know why, why you know, girls of that class might commit suicide. She really, truly views the lower classes as a separate race of creature. You know, she, the, the poor have no link to her whatsoever. She truly views herself as almost a superior species to them. And, you know, this social snobbery is a really good phrase to use when describing Mrs. Burling. She truly believes herself to be superior and couldn't care less about women like Eva Smith and wouldn't even pretend to put themselves in, the, in Eva's position or to think about why she might do anything. And notice Sheila is the one here almost telling her mother off. And Sheila is shocked and horrified by her mother's impression. For your own sake, as well as ours, you mustn't... You mustn't. mustn't. Really, Sheila? You mustn't build up a kind of wall between us and that girl. If you do, the inspector will just break it down and it'll be all the worse when he does. Again, we see Sheila becoming less ignorant here. You shouldn't build up a wall between you and Eva Smith. The inspector will knock down these walls. And that is, of course, what the inspector is here to do, to knock down this wall that the rich have built up against the poor. So we see, again, Sheila actually being very insightful that she has worked this out and she is urging her mother to cooperate with the inspector, almost like she's becoming the inspector's sidekick or becoming more on his side. Is right. I beg your pardon. I said she's right. I consider that a trifle impertinent, Inspector. <laughs> no, what is it, Sheila? I don't know. Perhaps it's just because impertinent is such a silly word. In any case, Mother, do stop before it's too late. If you mean that the Inspector will take offence, no, no, I never take offence. I'm glad to hear it. Though it seems to me that we have more reason for taking offence. I realise, Inspector, that you have to conduct some sort of inquiry, but I must say that so far you seem to be conducting it in a rather peculiar and offensive manner. 
You know, of course, that my husband was Lord Mayor only two years ago, and that he's still a magistrate. Mrs. Burling, the inspector knows all that, and I don't think it's a very good idea to remind him. It's crazy. Stop it, please, Mother. Yes. Now, what about Mr. Burling? He's coming back in a moment. He's just talking to my son, Eric, who seems to be in an excitable, silly mood. Really? I'm afraid he may have had rather too much to drink tonight. We were having a little celebration here. Isn't he used to drinking? He's only a boy. Again, he's only a boy. She views her children, her adult children, as children, referring to him as a boy. But also her ignorance. You know, it's clear that Eric is um, used to drinking, but Mrs. Burning doesn't realise that. No, he's a young man. And some young men drink far too much. And Eric's one of them. Sheila! I don't want to get poor Eric into trouble, but this isn't the time to pretend that he's not used to drink. He's been drinking too much for the last two years. It isn't true. Gerald, say it isn't true. Um, well, Mr. Croft? Actually, I've never seen much of him outside this house. But, well, I have gathered that he does drink pretty hard. And this is the time you choose to tell me? Yes, of course it is. That's what I meant when I talked about building up a wall that's sure to be not flat. It makes it all the harder to bear. But it's you and not the inspector who's doing it. But don't you see? He hasn't started on you yet. If necessary, I shall be glad to answer any questions the inspector wishes to ask me. Though naturally, I don't know anything about this girl. We'll see, Mrs. Burling. I've been trying to persuade Eric to go to bed, but he says you told him to stay up. That's right, Mr. Burling. Why? Because I shall want to talk to him. I can't see why. But if you must, then I suggest you do it now. Have him in and get it over, then let the lad go. I'm sorry, but I can't do that yet. Now look here, Inspector. He must I've... wait his turn. Inspector, I've told you before, I don't like your tone, nor the way you're handling this inquiry. And I don't propose to give him much more rope. You needn't give me any rope. No, he's giving us rope so that we'll hang ourselves. So what is the matter with that child? Oh, very excited. Well, come along, Inspector. What is it you want to know? At the end of January last year... Okay, so we're going to stop there. So that was just, you know, a little bit of the play there that we read. But we're going to think about two things. How are Sheila and Gerald's, or how is Sheila and Gerald's relationship presented as changed? And how does this develop our impression of Mrs. Burling? So what I would like you to do is I would like you to do two things. Firstly, I would like you to write an explanation of how your impression of Sheila and Gerald's relationship has changed since the start of the play. So think about um, how they seem to see more negative sides to one another now and how it's causing them to sort of argue and be distrustful. And then see if you can write a mini PE based on Mrs. Burling saying girls of that class, you know, who knows why they do anything, girls of that class. How does this develop your impression of Mrs. Burling? Now, if you want to write it as a mini PE, that's great. If you'd rather just, you know, write another explanation, that is fine too. As I say, every lesson, you just have to try and do these tasks to the best of your ability that you can do by yourself. All of this we will do again next year. So if you find a bit difficult, please do not worry or stress. OK, so here are your tasks. Pause the video and get them completed. So finally then, how is Mrs. Burling's behaviour contentious? So think about the way she speaks to the inspector and how is that contentious behaviour or attitudes between her and say Sheila? And with dubious, why does Mrs. Burling feel dubious about the inspector? You know, why is she unsure of his behaviour? Okay, well done and see you next lesson.